Hello, everyone. It's Kate Stillman. I'm here with Helena. How do I pronounce your name? Elena. Helena, and it's Subjana. Subijana. Subijana. Awesome. And you have been in YHC, and, and you're frustrated because certain things are working, but certain things aren't working, and the lockdown didn't help, and this whole idea of like you know being great in person, and then and then having lockdown so that you couldn't meet in person or do live talks in person and um and and how do you then adjust and now you're moving you live in france uh and you're wanting to do more in in group coaching so what did i miss everything is so good. it's exactly that so <laughs> okay so that's really where that's really where where we're starting from yeah um, and it's, you know, I would say in general, like it's lockdowns. I know I was just reading this morning, like Beijing's going into ma massive lockdowns again. We're recording this in April 2022. So it's been two years of lockdowns in certain places. I think one of the things that we're realizing, whether we're um, in an autocracy or whether we're in a democracy, is that we actually have a lot less control um, than we used to about how we can run our, our businesses. So yeah, I hear you. It's it's really frustrating, um, and it's and it's uh, I I think the new landscape that we need to adjust to, and adapt to, and deal with, which means that we might need to develop new skills, uh, ones that we might not have needed to run our businesses in the in the past. And I'm not sure that there's any you know magic pill around any of that, but I just want to acknowledge that I hear your frustration. I hear that uh, you know it's it's harder to find. The people that you can help when you can't organize an event in person. All right. So I think the question is like, where do we go? Where do we go from here? Um, it sounds like what you want help with is you're moving to a new place and how to establish yourself and how to build community and how to run a dynamic group in in your new community. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when do you move? Uh, I'm moving at the end of July and one important point is that actually I'm, uh, I nearly stopped my activity, not only the coaching but also the massage and um, I'm just doing the yoga and the summer breath uh, stuff because um, what I realized is during the last two years I've been training and learning and English is not my mother tongue, it's mm -hmm. one of the languages I understand, I speak and I read and whatever, but it is also an intellectual exercise for me. It's not only the comprehension, but it's also understanding, talking. So for me, actually, my, uh, my, uh, my brain is telling me stop with trainings, learnings, you know, Vata is huge, it's overwhelmed and is telling me, please go to your body, do some dancing, do whatever you want, but stop learning. Yeah. This is the message. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to share it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can only, if we're taking in, taking in, taking in, we need to process. Right. And so it, the nervous system gets. That's, you know, in Ayurveda, we'd say it's vata in the maja datu. So vata datu is the nervous, the nervous system, the nervous channels really closely linked to the subtle anatomy, the chakras and the, you know, the, the subtler of the, the kosha. So good for you for listening and for, you know, just taking a break and processing and digesting and creating space for the next level of your evolution. Yeah. Great. It's, and that's a great topic. That's a great topic for free talks as well. I know a lot of people now are ready to meet up again and are wanting deep connection. They're wanting interactive group activity. And so for you to really process what you've learned and how to, how to bring that to others and in the language that you want to bring it to them in is, is probably a good goal to have. I have a favorite, uh, it's not really a mantra because it's in English, but it's a, it's a Mahavakya. It's like a great statement of how easy can it be? 
So when you're transitioning out of that overwhelm and taking on so much and learning so much and feeling like you need to do all the things, it can be a question that allows for simplification. Like how easy can it be? How easy can it be to do what I'm trying to do here? And so let's get clear on what it is that that it is you're trying to do. And I will pull up my pad and so that we can be looking at um, and taking notes together. So paint a picture, you move to France, and then what are, what are, what's the goal? In terms of you and your, and your work as a wellness pro, in terms of uh, both revenue and in terms of impact, in terms of how much you want to work, in terms of the, you know, the kind of work you want to do? Uh, in fact, <clears throat> um, what I'm realizing is that, um, well, I, I'm 50. And mm -hmm. what I realize is that um, I've been uh, living with old schemes. I've been repeating old patterns. Okay. Um, and uh, the thing is, even my actual activity, which was mainly uh, Ayurveda uh, and the massage, and uh, up to last year, it was with the yoga and with the summer breath. Uh, what I realized is that the idea of only Ayurveda, th the point is, I nearly identified myself with Ayurveda, or I'm not Ayurveda, I am Elena Subihana, mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. uh, Ayurveda is one of the uh, one of, of of the tools that I use, but it's mm -hmm. not my main tool. So, uh, what I want to implement there is, um, first I need to find out who I really am, who am I, mm -hmm. and what I want to do with all the things that I've been learning for the past 20 years mm -hmm. of, and of course also my own experience my life experience mm -hmm. and um, the idea is uh, I want I don't exactly know what I want to do there it's going mm -hmm. to be a mix of coaching it's going to be uh, the yoga the soma and uh, and also the holistic healing but mm -hmm. it's I don't want to uh, live my life for it. I want to have free time for the things that I've left behind me for the last 20, 25 years, which is dancing, which is painting, which is using my hands to create something. Mm -hmm. with my hands. Okay, great. All right. And, right. So, yeah. So when I look at this, it's like, this is I mean, this is a common realization that like the modalities, which is in this list over here, I'll put it in purple, that over here, the modalities, these are all different modalities. So these are ways that you can guide the, the journey of holistic healing. So these are all different tools in the toolkit. Like if you look at a master carpenter, they have uh, they have a, literally a toolkit, and they have all these different tools in the toolkit. So they're going to use the appropriate tool at the appropriate time in order to build the house. So if you're leading a journey, and it's your unique journey, and the whole thing we do in in YHC is like this is the business model, this is the coaching model, and then you get you get to design using all that you are, all that you know works because it's worked for you, and you know what you're doing in that because that's what it's worked for you so you're living from personal experience and then your personal brand right it's not to ayurveda it's not to any one of these modalities it's to the unique journey that you can lead and so the way in terms of like in yhc in the curriculum now that you're ready to to dive back in you know it's like here you are and there's and there's you are on the other side of this healing journey and yes there's a lot of there's a, of course, we're all still learning too. I always say that like, you know, it's like the members are our mentors, right? Like we're all, we're all also continually learning and you're learning that like, oh, I need to really have good boundaries with my time. I need to have uh, time for painting and time for resting and 
time for doing the things that I love and make sure dance is part of my life too. And so when you look at you leading the journey, you're going to use what's worked for you and bring people from A, which is the need to heal, to, through a journey. And here's the journey and all the different steps that are using all the different modalities to arrive at B, which is, I will say, holistically healed. And what we find with this, it's like the, in Body Thrive, it's like they're living enough of the habits, enough of the time to have reverse chronic inflammation. So if you organize your time around this and you say like, okay, this is the journey so that it gets me out of the piecemeal work and the packaging and that, then some of your time does need to go to, my guess is making sure that in the new community that you're at, uh, is in the new community that you're at, is like finding the hubs of where people connect. You know, and some of these hubs will be online, but a lot of them will also be in person. It's like, who's holding events? What's going on? So I live in a pretty rural place, but there's an entrepreneur's uh, speed dating that's happening a week from today. It's, you know, and I have to drive 45 minutes, but there's going to be a lot of people in that room that I want them to know who to refer to me. And so then I've got to show up, but I've got to actually go to these different hubs so that people know who I am and what I do. One of the huge, when I go there, there's gonna be, it's 45 minutes away, most people there won't know me. I might know one, per, if I know one person there, I'll, I'll be somewhat surprised. So it's not that different than you moving to a new community and just saying like, well, where are things going on? Well, I wanna make sure I show up in those places so that people know me. Now, when we look at what it takes to become a course member and if at this point people become members of your healing journey and at this point they get to go on whatever you're calling Helena's healing journey when you're at these hubs and these people are finding out about you it's like well what's what's the first experience they should have what's the next experience they should have what's the next experience they should have what do they need to know? What do they need to think? What do they need to experience in order to transact with me and start the healing journey? And so what happens is a lot of times practitioners like yourself just get caught in the one-on-one -on -one model. And then you're just trading time for money, 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 and there's no scale and it's exhausting. And that's really what you know, that's really what we're guiding people out of. And you know enough about, about it in YHC to, to get that. And sometimes for some people in YHC, it's like it takes a while before they're really ready to implement. And it sounds like for you, uh, the lockdown really didn't help. No. <laughs> and there was nothing that you or I could have done about it. So now we just exhale and say like, okay, well, I guess you and I don't rule the world, darn darn shocking but now we're ready to like we're ready to do it right in the next place that that you live because we do know that this works <laughs> we do know this works so what are your next questions we've we talked about hubs talked about designing the experience and there's a really good if you go to our wisdom and wellness free facebook group um, i'll send you the link if you don't have it uh it's there, I really walked through this with another member and that was that was last week. I'm trying to think, who did I walk through this with? I can see her face. I cannot remember her name in this exact moment. I will though, I will before we're off. And then, um, I'll, and I'll make sure for people watching this that it's in the show notes. But very much it was like just on leading through, like really mapping out these experiences. So like, one experience you can do is like have a one-on-one -on -one with someone. Another you can do is have them watch a webinar or a mini training um, that really explains the healing journey. Like I was just at the National Ayurvedic Medicine Association conference and I was explaining to some of the wellness professionals there, like what is a healing journey? And why do they need all these modalities? Like why do they need to be indoctrinated into, why, why does the typical person with chronic inflammation 
need to go. Oh, Debbie Snyder. I knew it would come. Debbie Snyder is the name of the person that I really walked through. I'm going to write it down here. Uh, the Debbie Snyder session. And that will also be on the YHC podcast. But it's better. It's much better to actually watch it on Facebook because um, I map it out. We use the pictures. Uh, so it's like, where do all these practices go in the healing journey and why the body thrive habits and why dynamic groups? We know from what in Western psychology is called group intervention. It's just their term. We call it dynamic groups, but we know groups of all faster than individuals. So people that are trying to change their habits, people are trying to learn a new, new thing, a new trick, trying to change their life, trying to heal. They need a quote unquote group intervention. And that's exactly what we're teaching is that like this whole group, this whole group gets to go on this journey together with you and really use all that you know so that you can lead your unique journey. And this becomes your personal brand. So it's not tied to Ayurveda, it includes Ayurveda. It's not tied to somatic breath work, it includes somatic breath work. It's not tied to dancing and painting and creativity, but you better bet that you guys are gonna do some dancing and painting and some creativity because you know that's what works. And because that's what you want to do. It's where it brings you joy. It's what renews your spirit. So that of course you're gonna include in that. And then you can also, if we you know, do this hubs thing, you can also become a hub. So this could be you know, Helena's hub where you could have dance, painting, and creativity breathwork parties and host that at a local yoga studio or host that at a community center or a library that rents a room and do that consistently and encourage people to bring friends. And then if we look at this, that becomes one of the way people come in to schedule a one-on-one -on -one about what do they need to what do they need to heal? So I would just say this is a one-on-one -on -one healing session, and it can be free. It can be twenty-five minutes, et cetera, and just and so they can go into the next part of the process, next part of the process. Uh, something that really worked very well uh, was, you know, the um, the flash coaching. This is really it's a formula that really works because. At the, at the very moment that I decided to clear <laughs> what I really wanted, and it's, it's coming slowly but surely, I have flash coaching automatically. Awesome. So you're talking about like the coaching gyms or laser coaching where you're able yes, to... Yes, yeah. it works. People, because after the 15, 20 minutes, they have one... They have something. They leave uh, the coaching with something, an exercise, a suggestion, an idea. So, okay, so I look at this, so we have 15, 20 minutes. As soon as you will leave the call, mm -hmm. you will leave with something in your hands. Yeah. So that you can apply today. Awesome. So. Awesome. So when I look at that, I'm going to put that under this list too. I love that you're calling it flash coaching. Sometimes we call it laser coaching or coaching gyms. Uh, yes. So then anything that you know you want to include in your modalities, you're going to put under the modalities. And that just means these are, these are tools in your toolkit and you're going to use them because they work. They really work. So I think the question for you is to is to start when is I mean you have what you said July is when you're moving right now it's the end of April so you've got May and June is what I would do is I would I would make a list of the hubs and I would look within a you know a decent radius of where you're going to be if if all your coaching is going to be in person and I don't really recommend that because people are busy and people travel and life isn't as stable as it used to be. And so people want a lot of flexibility in their lives. It's what I would recommend doing is like having, you know, one or two times a month be in person and one or two times a month being online, even doing like once a month in person, right? Where it's, and it might be for three hours, that might be part of your structure is like, we're gonna have, 
you know, every Saturday morning, the first Saturday of the month from nine to noon, we're gonna use this library or this community center or this um, classroom. And we're gonna do all these practices. We're gonna do some painting, we're gonna do some dancing, we're gonna do some breath work, we're gonna do some liberating structures like we do on our, on our interactive calls. Uh, you know, then great. Like people know, people know like that's then the commitment and then the other, you know, I'll just go into here. So the structure of, of the healing could be, you know, one, once a month, like a three hour, three hour workshop. And then three times a month could be office hours. And then you could do 15 minute coaching gyms once a month because you love the flash coaching. So say you have 10 members, say it's $3,000 or 3,000 euro uh, as you're getting established in the new community. And that's, I mean, I don't care what people price it at. Some people will price it double, some people will price that or less than that. I don't recommend going much less than that if for a year. I, I wouldn't, uh, especially with a structure like this. I'm just gonna write 15 minutes a month flash. Then it's enabling the people that are say two hours away to come to that three hour workshop, you know, and make a day of it. And then you can say if some members are going to go out to lunch afterwards, some people are going to take a hike afterwards and they can make it a full day thing if they want. You don't have to be there or do that, but you're just saying some members of the group will be doing this afterwards because what they're going to find is that they'll make friends with people who are really interested in healing and on their healing journey and you're giving them the structure and all that so it doesn't have to be a full day of commitment to you every month it can just be a half day but you're you're just saying like and this is what i do on all my my live events is i you know come it's three days i'm in the classroom for about five hours of those days the rest of the time i'll let you know what the group is doing you're welcome to do that i'm not leading those activities the group is just doing those things together if they want and then it's worth the day, you know, it's worth the day to come for many of them. Uh, what's the population of the area that you're moving to? Um, well, uh, I would say uh, there are uh, people that, uh, old people, let's say, and mm -hmm. young people, I would say the average of age, um, for, between 30 and 50, you know, with children, little children, I, I'm going to a surfer's uh, place. Okay. So, yeah. So lots of surfers, lots of yoga, lots of Ayurveda. Uh, it's, it's really the, the healing. Yeah. Lots of, uh, you know, um, also a healing with the, with the, uh, sonotherapy and things like that with the bowls with the crystal so awesome uh, it, it is really a place and i always uh, begin to know them i know the places mm. where i could go uh, mm -hmm. i'm i'm already uh, you know um, creating some some netting with them you know uh, so i'm sure it's it Just... might work it's 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 going to work but yeah I need to be myself and what I'm offering, although I have the Ayurveda next to me and the yoga and this and that. Yeah. I know that there is place for everybody. So, yeah. So, and it sounds like there's enough people. It's not, I mean, what is the population like 50,000 people or more or less? Uh, no, less, less, less. Is it like yeah. 10,000 people? Uh, where I'm living, because the thing is, I'm living in a, in a place where, you know, there are different, um, little it's towns you know yeah one yeah. next to, to another yeah i would say uh all around yes maybe i don't know thirty thousand. and in in summertime during summertime it might double okay great great and so in summer you might do more events and experiences to bring people in even if those people are only going to be on the office hour calls that's fine and with some of those people, you might do longer, um, you might do either do more or longer coaching sessions if they're going to miss the once a month in person. But they also might travel for those too. Maybe not make every one of them, but 
but maybe do that. The other way to do it is like four times a year, do a two day live workshop where they come from out of town to do that. And that's another structure. And you'll figure that out as you run your pilot, as you coach people, the structure is gonna evolve, Helena. And that's the beauty of this business model is like, you'll make changes, you'll tweak it. I mean, we evolve our structure continually. I mean really like we're like oh we don't need to do those sessions we need to add these sessions people change times change things change and that's fine it's fine you know and you just get better like oh we want to do four live meetups a year they're each a weekend that's part of the five thousand euro price to be part of helena's healing club if you want to be in the healing club you're in for a year everyone's committed and you get the focus or flash coaching sessions and the office hours and all that and on those office hours you're doing somatic breathing. You might even have people bring their paints. You might do a 10 minute dance party together over Zoom. It's fine. Like you're just reinforcing, this is the stuff that works. It's fun, it's goofy, it's your club. You get to do whatever works, whatever you really know works. So don't worry about nailing the structure. Just like think of the best structure to possibly test first. And then, and then put it down on paper. People will have objections. You can change your structure as people have objections, as you're like, oh, that's really not going to work for the people that are most interested. And you can adapt and, and adjust it. Uh, but it also, I also find the opposite true of just being like, let's just test this structure. Yeah. Let's just test it for six months and see if it, and see if it works or test it for a year. So because of that, I would look at you said there's also a lot of small small towns around that town. Yeah. And so I would think of like what are the hubs? What are the what are the most popular Facebook groups or or next door neighbor groups? Uh, who are some of the who are some of the leaders? Who are the more successful businesses that are good networking businesses? In those locations. So if someone has a yoga studio that's maybe a good, you know, really popular yoga studio. That might be great. If someone has a really popular gym, that might be great. If someone, I just met a doctor at the Ayurvedic medicine conference and he sees 500 patients a month and he doesn't have a coaching. He doesn't have any coaching to support his clients. Does he want to become a coach? No. Does he want to run a coaching program in his business? Maybe, maybe not. He might just rather send clients to me, get a portion of that. And then I guide them through the habits. I guide them through the healing journey. So say a doctor's like that, there may be an, there may be a naturopath or they're super popular. That to me is a hub. Mm, okay. There could be a, uh, um, an art council, right? And they want to, they, they're a great place to do like healing, healing as art. And then that's a hub that you could go do a healing as art workshop and find new people to come into your group. Cause really you're just using those hubs to, to find your members. Um, it's interesting what you're talking about because the place where I will be living, uh, there is a doctor, an allopathic doctor, but she's also um, uh, she she's also specialized in naturopathy and nutri nutri therapy and also the Ayurvedic aspect. I don't know at which level, to be honest. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. But but why not talk, talk and say exactly. hello? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. I mean, what I love about it too, is it's like, I just want to know what they're doing. Cause I mean, I don't want to work with everybody either. So I want to know who to send to them, you know, and in networking, it's always like, how can you be helpful to them? How can they be useful to you? And maybe become good friends, you know, that are just supporting each other's businesses. Yeah. And if it feels like you're networking too much with people who see you as a competitor or see you as competitive, then you want to network outside of that and say, well, who are the women that are selling jewelry or that have a women's boutique or where it's really not competitive? Because say you own a women's boutique and say you notice that people used to be size six and now they're size 12, right? And you want to help your clientele because you love your clientele and you don't want to see, you don't want to start ordering size 14. You don't want to start, and I don't know, I know the sizes are different there, but like, you don't want to keep ordering the bigger sizes, right? Mm -hmm. Or say you're a hair cutter and you're the most famous hair cutter in this small, cool town where the surfers hang out and you're working mostly with the older women and they have affluence and they like to travel 
and that and say they're complaining about their joints hurting or they're complaining about gaining weight or right complaining about the symptoms of inflammation well that's a really great networking partner it's a really great hub it's totally non-competitive it doesn't matter how much people heal they're still going to need their haircut yeah mm. and it's like where is my target client going and people I would naturally have an affinity for, businesses I naturally would have a good, you know, rapport with, and they're not, they're not doing what I'm doing. And that's really what you're, you're looking for in there. And that's it. I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, but in my perspective, like it's the right, it's the right work to do that gains traction. So like if, if I only led Body Thrive, if it, that was the only thing I was doing and say I was like, I just wanna make $100,000 a year and I, my, I'm gonna charge 5,000 US for Body Thrive and I'm gonna enroll two people a month to make my 100,000 a year. I'm, because I've been doing this for a long time and I have the structures for it, it's really easy to do that. It's really easy to do that. It's like the right business model to put your time and effort to. One one thing is that for me, um, I know that that you have a, a, another point of view regarding the money, and and this is not the point. Is that um, what I really want to do is I want to enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah. So it's not yeah. okay. The money, okay. Yeah. To be honest, I have enough money. This is not the point. This is really okay. Yeah. It's important because do you, yeah. It's normal to be rewarded of what you're doing, what yeah. I've been investing in all this. Of course, yeah. But to be Let honest, me just show it this way then. Yeah. So then, so then, for you with pricing, the price is really here. They are. They're going from up. Oh, it didn't take. Hold on. I want to make sure you can see it. So A to B, this is the healing journey. You know, this is where they're starting. And, and you can say, this is what's going on when they're starting. These are their issues. This is where they're going to be. These are their outcomes from working with you. And what I always want to know is what, will, what exchange needs to take place. Sometimes this is called skin in the game. So how much skin in the game are they gonna need so that they don't stop when it gets hard here? Like how much are they gonna need to invest to show up, to follow through and to really do it? And how much skin in the game do they need so that they're committed so that you have more fun? Because it's so much more fun to work with committed members. I completely agree with it. And in fact, this is also a problem that I have. It is that they are, oh, yes, I'm coming, so I have this problem because yeah. I want, I gain too much in the menopause, too much, uh, too yeah. much weight and this and that. Say, so, okay, so we have the first session, which yeah. I charge only that, you know, uh, 85 euros. It yeah. lasts for one, one hour, or yeah. I'm doing a massage, which gives me a lot of information because yes. it's the body who is talking. Yeah. And Great. I have the capacity to 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 read and to understand what the body is telling me. So, and then they say, okay, so what's next? And I say, okay, I can, uh, I have a program, a personalized program that I have divided in three programs. A first program of two months, which is between 400 and 600 euros. A second program, which is uh, for between three months and and five months and yeah. which is uh, 900 euros and the last one which lasts for six months yeah or more it's between thousand and thousand three hundred when the and they know that in six months for instance they pay it in six time okay so they devise the the sum of of this uh, by yeah. by six okay and as soon as we talk about money yeah ah uh, 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 it is so expensive say uh, what do you want 
you, yes. you want to, to, to be. Uh, so to, what uh, I want to say is all these things need to go in this webinar. Mm. So okay. you're going to take, it's going to be an objection webinar of like all of the things that, because the problem is, is if they don't invest, they don't heal and they don't know this. They only know the way their mom and dad taught them to use money and their mom and dad did not invest money in their health and wellness. And like once upon a time, you know, culture was so healthy, people didn't need to. Uh, another argument would be not everybody wants to be enlightened no. and evolve yeah. and grow and be with people that are enlightened, involved and grow. And some people would rather just, you know, have a couple glasses of wine at night and relax and do what they did yesterday. And so all of that needs to be in the webinar too, where you excite people to their potential. In the webinar, you talk about the healing journey in A to B and the modalities. And this is in your YHC training too, under free talk of like how to, how to really do this step by step. I, what you have to tell them is, I call it, it's like marketing that actually pushes people away. And, and, and what that means is you say like, you know, most people don't invest. And because they don't invest, they only get from here to here. They don't actually get to be, they don't actually get these same outcomes. So let's find out what is it costing you? What is your inflammation? What are your health issues? What is hanging out with friends that just complain about things or have the same conversation that they had last year? Like what's that actually costing you in your life? And if it's not costing enough, like they're not someone that you wanna work with, right? Or if they don't see the potential and how fun it is to hang out with people that are growing and changing and evolving, and having the time of their life, it's not a good fit. And you can make that really clear. And you can say this program, and you'll see it in the webinar script. This is not for, and it's in the free talk script. This is not for people who, and then all the people, all the objections you've had in the past. And so they can hear their own past beliefs. And now they can question their own past beliefs like, oh, Maybe I'm not thinking about money the right way. Oh, maybe, maybe I could have a life beyond my wildest dreams. Like maybe like, you know, this nagging feeling I have that I'm missing out on something is because I'm missing out on something. And maybe this is exactly what I've been looking for. And yeah, maybe I have to use money in a new way. Maybe I have to invest. And if you tell your story and you say, you know, this is, this is how Helena invested. And this is also in your YHC training. It's also in lead the journey where it's like, you actually look at all the things you've learned over here in your modalities that have really changed your life. And that's what you've got to tell them in the webinars. Like, these are the things that really changed my life. And what I would do is I'd have the one-on-one -on -one session. I'd have them watch the webinar in order to schedule a body work session and they should pay for the body work session and you can even have a package where they pay for all of this as one thing and then they're qualified to be in the group and everyone has to go through that process in order to qualify to be in your group i mean there's a million ways to do that to figure that out with lead generation but the more you see what it takes for someone they've got to overcome their past beliefs They've got to overcome how they use money. They have to experience, remember, the experience, part of the experience is the one-on-one, -on -one. part of the experience is the webinar. And in the webinar, understanding what is inflammation costing you? What's the opportunity cost of not having people in your life that are growing, changing, and evolving, and learning new things, and living a healthier life? Like, really, like, what kind of life do you want to live? What kind of retirement do you want to have for the retirees? And I often will bring statistics in so that people know, you know, in their socioeconomic demographic category, like what to expect if they don't make some hard choices now. Just what they can expect, just based on what happens to most people who don't make a hard investment, that don't, <laughs> that don't really like it beyond their current comfort zone. Because all these modalities, like this is amazing. I and mean, would you trade it? Would you trade what you know back for the money you spent or invested in yourself? No, right? Yeah. No way. There's no way. I mean, one of the things that I just so am fascinated by, like, 
people like you and I, who we, we did these modalities not to help people at first, but really to help ourselves, right? To really explore the human technology, our physiology, to really live our most awake life. It's like to really like explore our physiologies, right? And it's like, we had no trouble investing. Like, yeah, it hurt. Yeah, we weren't spending money on fancy cars. Like, yeah, we weren't spending money on Gucci bags, right? We were putting money into our in inner Gucci bag. And we'd never trade it back. And it just adds up over time. That investment pays back day after day after day after day. And a lot of people didn't make those choices. So they have no idea how to invest. So I say, okay, that's my problem. It's my problem that my ideal member, that all of these people, they do not know how to invest. So I better, I'm gonna assume that. So in this experience, I need to teach them how to invest, how to invest in what they want. I have to teach them that because they need to have an experience that changes their belief. And that's my responsibility. Because if I, if not, I'm going to keep complaining that these people, they're a great fit. You could really help them. They would be so overjoyed if they were on the other side. I mean, really, they would not regret their investment. They're getting return on it every day. But man, why? They won't sign up. So I just want to blame them and be mad at them, just like be mad at the COVID lockdowns and all that. But it's like, no, actually, this I have control over. I can change how people think. I can change what they believe based on giving them a new experience. I'm going to be in charge of the experience of people that end up transacting money, of people who I actually make an offer to, to take on a healing journey. So that these people over here can actually get to here, so that they can actually do the process. I'm going to take responsibility, saying like, well, as soon as they hear my name, I'm driving. I'm driving their experiences that they're going to have of of me and of this. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot to do. It's a lot to think about. You need to watch this like four times. And so does everybody else. That's where you're at, whether they're in yoga health coaching not, or not yet. Um, and this is, I tell you, like once we do this, it's magic and people will just say, oh my gosh, Helena's healing journey is the most amazing experience. It's absolutely worth 5,000 euro. I'm so glad I met her. And I also met my best friends and my life is forever changed. You can feel it, right? Like this, <laughs> like you're meant to do this work. You got these ladies, they're dancing, they're painting, they're breathing, they're hiking, they've met each other, they're floating in the water at the surf break. <clears throat> All right, I gotta go, but a pleasure to hang out with you. Become more active with us. We can totally support you now that you're ready to engage and implement and uh, yeah. I hope I can see you in Lisbon. Come see me in Lisbon, June 3rd to 5th. I can't wait. I can't uh, wait. I, I won't be available, but I've seen the program and say, oh my God, this would have been the, the nice opportunity to see you. But okay, it's, it will come. It will, it will come. come. We and will meet. It. We will yeah. meet. Okay. <laughs> okay Namaste. Thank you. Stay. Yes, thank you so much, Kate. Oh, my pleasure, Alina. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>